Here, Wrestling Observer Live, uh, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. we got a lot to talk about here today. Smackdown on Friday, tomorrow's Raw, in-your-face edition of Raw. They just announced this a couple of days ago. Somebody on the board said, or on the Twitch chat, Ha! Brian's going to be mad about the Raw booking before the show even starts. I'm not mad. It's par for the course. There's there's their strongest competition in forever starting Monday, and they figure out what they're going to do Monday on Friday, which, by the way, may even change by then. But, I mean, hello, did anybody not know the NFL was starting this coming Monday? Even I knew, for crying out loud. And on last week's show, did they announce anything? No. At least they announced it on SmackDown. I'll give them that. So tomorrow, Bill is an in-your-face edition of Raw. Dominic Mysterio, Seth Rollins will face off in a steel cage match. And I'm not making this up. Drew McIntyre. A storyline a couple of weeks ago was Drew McIntyre had a hairline fracture of his jaw. We didn't know if he was going to be able to make it to the pay-per-view. The next week, he just shows up and he's fine. And now this week, it is Drew McIntyre versus Keith Lee in a non-title match on Raw. Could we possibly rush this any faster? So, a couple of things are going to happen tomorrow. What they could do, what they could do, and often when I do these booking scenarios, it's not what I would do, but I wouldn't have booked this match anyway. So now that it's booked, what would I do? They could have Keith Lee beat Drew McIntyre after Randy Orton returns and interferes. And so Keith Lee can then cut a promo saying, I have beaten Randy, and I have beaten Drew, and I don't care which one of you wins at the pay-per-view, I want the winner, and you can do that at Hell in a Cell. That's what I expect to happen. Now, if I were going to do that, would I have treated Keith Lee the way they treated Keith Lee over the last several weeks? Of course not. Keith Lee went in there, and he ate the RKO, and he was about to be pinned on Raw last week when Drew McIntyre ran in, and we had our our schmoz finish. So that's the match there. We've also got Asuka versus Mickie James for the Raw women's title. They've done nothing to build up Mickie James for this match. And we have the Street Profits versus Cesaro and Nakamura non-title champion versus champion So that's Raw Monday. It should, I mean, I can't say it should do a good number because it's going head-to-head with the NFL, but it should do better than it would have done without those matches. That still may mean an all-time record low, but I guess we'll find out. And yes, that's my children downstairs going absolutely nuts. The jumpy has been blown up indoors. Mike, any thoughts on all of this? Why is it the in-your-face edition? Because they needed some sort of goofy tagline to promote on social media all weekend. And that's what they came up with. It's in your face. Mm. Oh, man. You know, it's amazing that that fans cannot appreciate, uh, in their words, long-term storytelling when they give us so much dedicated and and well-thought-out uh, long-term storytelling as, as we've gotten to lead into Monday night in your face, especially, like, as you mentioned, with Keith Lee. But... Uh, I just, hey, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. You know, SmackDown at least has Roman Reigns. SmackDown has Bailey. That's been one bright point of that show. And the, the looming feud between Bailey and Sasha, that's good. But with football here, with this Monday night being a game that's actually got the New York market in it because you get Steelers at the Giants is the, the early game that's going to come on at whatever time, 7.30 Eastern time or whatever it's going to be. That's going to be the one the uh, that affects Raw first in the number one media market. It uh, it looks like SmackDown might have a, a by leaps and bounds a much much better week, maybe even AEW. Now I will say this: look at these SmackDown numbers here. The show did this is the overnight, so this may not be the final number, but two point two six one million viewers, basically two point three million viewers, the largest overnight viewership for SmackDown since April ten which was a SmackDown following WrestleMania. That's a very, very good number. And I will say this about SmackDown. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's a great show. But it used to be a god-awful show. It used to be a show that I dreaded watching. 
Like I would do everything in my power to delay, delay. What else can I work on? Have I finished reading The Observer yet? What? And I finally just watch it and I suffer through it. Now, it's been two weeks, okay, granted, but I look forward to this show way more than I look forward to Raw because there's not a lot happening on Raw. The Mysterios are awesome. Drew is great. And that's about it, okay? SmackDown, the addition of Roman Reigns. MVP is pretty awesome. MVP is yeah. pretty great, too. But I mean, but I mean, MVP is great, but I've seen the same thing for like four straight months now. It's like nothing has changed. I keep watching the same show over and over for four months. SmackDown, we now have the return of Roman Reigns. And he's been put with Paul Heyman. And it is a main event act. And I had somebody that sent me an email and they just said, you know, Roman Reigns is boring me. And what? listen, I don't agree, but I can understand that. Because if you watch the Roman Reigns character, he sits there and he looks angry. And then he shows up at the end of a match and he wins. Like, he's really not doing a lot. I mean, if you want to argue that it's boring, that's fine. But I like the story. I think him and Paul are great. Of all of the goofy gimmicks that they've given him, the tribal king is by far the best one. Hell it's yeah. by far the best one, okay? So, I like that. And it's very obvious that this Sasha Bailey thing, as good as they were together as a team, like, people are into the breakup. Would I have broken them up? No. They were the best thing on three shows. But they decided now's the time to pull the trigger. They pulled it at the worst possible time. Because next month is Hell in a Cell. So it's almost for certain that their first big match is going to be in a Hell in a Cell match. And then the pay-per-view after that is Survivor Series. And so knowing this company, they're going to team up on that show. I mean, it's it's just... I have little faith. But people are into the breakup. bailey has been great. The beating last week was a great beating. Unfortunately, Sasha's already back on the show next week. It's not perfect! But the show is more fresh and exciting to me now than Raw is. And it paid off in the viewership. 2.261 million viewers. That's a lot of people interested in this stuff. Well, and that's the thing. Even if you don't personally love Bailey and Sasha, at least there's so many other people that do. There's at least some buzz, you know, that, that that's going to be going around with it. And there was people that were like, you know, genuinely feeling something when Bailey turned on her. So, you know, it worked, you know, maybe for the, you know, the, the hardened people out there, the people that regularly listen to the show, it didn't, but you know, for the, the general public, it looked like it did. And for the general public, as you mentioned, Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns are a, a main event act. They look like superstars in a Thunderdome in a universe devoid of superstars, they come across as superstars. And I can see where somebody might think it's a little bit boring. I think it's just he's sitting there radiating awesome. And we'll see how it goes when he finally, you know, sticks it to Uso because at some point, you know, one figures that's going to happen. I, I can't believe that, you know, he's going to get the, you know, the, the, the hang on Roman Reigns first and, and, and prevent any sort of attack. If you see Roman laying him out very badly before the pay-per-view, and that's going to come across probably fantastic. So if you are not following Talking Smack, not everything is perfect in WWE land. So they announced on top Talking Smack on Saturday that after all of these months of Otis and Mandy and their storyline, Saturday on Talking Smack, they announced that Mandy is now on Raw. <laughs> and Otis is going to stay on SmackDown. Now, the storyline, which I'm not making up, is that Miz and Morrison... And by the way, I can't even believe I'm telling this story, but this is the story they're telling us. Mm. Miz and Morrison have been trying to steal Otis's Money in the Bank contract. Okay? They have already explained that the Money in the Bank contract is non-transferable. Miz believes, in storyline, that if he gets a hold of the contract and he brings it to his lawyer, maybe they can find a loophole. So, every time they try to get the contract, they open up the box and it's a sandwich, or it's an apple, you know, because Otis is fat, and Otis has the contract in a lunch pail or something, alright? So, this made Miz and Morrison so mad over the course of two weeks, that Miz... Because he is a TV star, he went to the 
heads of USA, Fox, he called in, he called in a favor to get Otis's girlfriend moved to the other brand. That's the storyline. Now, I don't know in real life why they moved Mandy there. I mean, no one knows that I know of. I've asked people. I mean, the best anybody can come up with is we've got a new mystery blonde that is going to be debuting on SmackDown who appears to be doing the Mandy Rose gimmick. And I guess they don't need two hot blondes doing the same gimmick, so one of them's got to go to Raw. And this was the storyline they came up with. Dude, I don't know, okay? All I know is they did it on a Saturday on Talking Smack, and that's the storyline that they've come up with. Don't yell at me. Did Wobbly Walrus weigh in on that? Oh, we'll talk about Wobbly after the break, Mike. So you might want to go get a drink of water or something. Back in a moment, Observer Live. <laughs> 